welcome to Fish Disney. So we came back out to Oregon Inlet today looking for more sheep sid. Wind's blowing about 20 mile an hour, so I apologize for the wind noise that I'm sure is there. Out here at the new Mass Knight Bridge, this place at one time it's not new anymore, a couple years old. Came over to the Hatter Island side. This is the old Bonner Bridge. This is the Bass Knight Bridge. They've turned this into a uh, public free access fishing pier. But we're um, sitting out here uh, sheep's head fishing. Looks like Chris just caught a, a decent sheep's head about 14 inches long. Outgoing tide. We're two hours from the dead low. These sheep's head out here bite best from uh, two hours, two hours and a half before dead low until about an hour after dead low. Once the tide starts coming in, they don't bite. At least I can't catch them. I'm using the sand fleece for bait. Just drop it down right next to the pylons and um, find it's flat current. So the current's flowing out towards the ocean this way. So we're fishing along this edge. We see Krina up there fishing. You'll fish along this edge. Find a pylon and just let it go right down the side of it. Hopefully the wind noise is not so terrible that you couldn't hear a word I said. But 20 mile an hour winds, this is about the only kind of fishing we can do today. Can't go offshore. All the other thing you can do is anchor. Karina's got one right there. Let's see how big it is. Oh no, it popped off. It was a good one. We're, we're finding a few other bites picking up a little bit. We've had to switch pylons a couple of times. That's another thing I'll add. We was where that boat's parked at now. We were sitting right there. We were there about an hour ago. We didn't get a single bite. We moved down two pylons towards Hatter's Island and uh, instantly started getting bites. So. If you think the fish should be biting, keep moving until you find them. Biggest point of advice is don't settle. Keep moving, keep trying something different. Set a time limit on yourself. I give each pylon about 30 minutes to produce something. And if it don't get it done within that amount of time, moving on. Sometimes it's 20 minutes. If I think conditions are prime and there should be fish there, I don't get a bite in 20 minutes, I'm out of there. But we're going to stick around here for a minute and uh, see what happens. Behind a pile and trying to find where the wind ain't blowing here. Oh, not there. Oh, I guess this is about as good as it gets. All right, so this is the rig I'm using. This is uh, got a swivel. I'll tie this to my main line. 
Mainline's 80 pound braid. This is 40 pound fluorocarbon. Got a dropper loop tied to a number one live bait hook. And I got just a snap swivel at the bottom to hold a weight. One hook chicken rig. So I like this rig pretty good. I've uh, found that if I get this hung up, I can most of the time get it free using the weight at the bottom. So this is the rig. I think you do. Chris, middle tree got one. That's a pretty one. Oh yeah. Nice one. Oh, yeah. Play 14 inches. Nice. She stunned that one getting it up here. Fell out of its mouth. Woo. Nice. That? Maybe? What pound test line you using? Okay, ain't worried about that then. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He's a little bit chunky. Oh, nice one. Look at the colors on that one. Middle tree with another one. for a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Broke it off. Broke me off. 
back in here in a little while so this area is going to be pretty rough so we're going to go ahead and get out of here this is the last day so we're probably heading towards the house still got to flay these uh sheep's head up that we got today so we're going to try to get off this thing we'll try to get off this thing without killing ourselves Back at the house now. Going to clean up these sheep's head we got. Ended up getting 10 of them. So not too bad for a uh, half day, just a few hours we was out there. Wind and rain came through and the wind's supposed to get worse throughout the day. So we went ahead and called it cause we got to pack up and head back up towards Wilkes County tomorrow. So I got a lot of stuff to clean up down here because I bring half my supplies owned with me when I come. But anyways, got 10 of them. That was a good one. That was one Chris caught. And the sea malt that I caught out there as well. So I'm gonna show you how to clean those up. Stick with me. So I got the bubble blade electric flay knife. The long flex blade. One of the sheep's head. Just go in right behind the fin. You hit that spine, and then rotate your knife. Flip your meat. Right out that skin. Same thing on the other side. Down to the spine. Once you hit that spine, just rotate your knife. These sheep's head have good sturdy bones where you don't have to worry too much about going through to the other side. You can put a pretty good amount of pressure on them. Take you a knife. I'll cut these rib bones right out. I'm going to cut the bloodline and pin bones. Pick off a scale. Bloodline and pin bones come right out. And then you got your boneless, skinless filet. Perfect for grilling or fish tacos or whatever you desire to do. So we're going to clean the rest of these sheep's head up. This video wraps up our spring 2022 Outer Banks trip. Hopefully we've covered something that helps anybody that may want to come down here and try this. 
while well, trial and error to figure it out on our part we're um, catching sheep's head and things like that got to see us do black sea bass for the first time down here hopefully we can get on more of those leave a comment where do you think we should go some new place i haven't tried i like going new places and figuring out new lakes and and new types of fish to catch so hopefully we'll see you out there next time you see us we'll probably be in fresh water so if you see us and you recognize us definitely let us know thanks for watching